Today we're going to review absolute value equations and absolute value inequalities. Let's start by talking about what absolute value means. Absolute value means the distance from zero. When you see these bars here, that means absolute value. So the absolute value of three, what is three's distance from zero? Well, that's just three. Absolute value of negative three, how far is negative three from zero? It's also three. So you're always going to end up with a positive here because it's a distance. When we get to equations, you'll see things that say the absolute value of x equals 3. And you're trying to find the value for x that makes this equation true. So based on what we just did here, we can see that x could have two possible values. x could equal 3 and negative 3. So both of these are solutions. You will typically have two solutions when it comes to absolute value equations. The only time you won't is if you have something like this. The absolute value of x equals 0. Well, in that case, the only solution we have is 0. Let's look at an equation. The absolute value of x plus 7 equals 10. That means everything inside of these absolute value bars has a distance of 10 from 0. So we have to set up two cases. x plus 7 might be equal to 10, but it could also be equal to a negative 10. Either of these would lead to an absolute value of 10. So we solve both of them. Now we have our two solutions. x is 3 and x is negative 17. Either of these could be plugged in here and give us an absolute value of 10. Let's try this one. We don't want to make our two cases yet because we have things going on outside of the absolute value. First, we want to get rid of all these extra operations, and then we can set up the two cases. So let's solve this by subtracting 6 from both sides. Now we can get rid of this 4 by using the inverse. And dividing. Now we have the absolute value isolated and now we can make the two separate cases. What value would give us an absolute value of 2? Well, 2 and negative 2. There we have our two separate cases, and then we solve each one. Seven and three, those are our two solutions. We can make sure we did everything correctly by plugging them back in. Seven minus five is two, the absolute value of two is two, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 6 is 14. Now let's plug in 3. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 6 is 14. Take a look at this one. Do you notice anything before we even start to solve this? Yeah, an absolute value is never going to be negative. So there's no possible way that this has a solution. There's nothing that has an absolute value of any negative number. So without doing any math, you can simply say no solution. Let's take a look at absolute value inequalities. Let's start here. The absolute value of x is greater than 3. Let's just think about what would work and make this true. Well, let's start here. Would 4 work? Is the absolute value of 4 greater than 3? Yeah. 5, 6? Yeah. All these numbers that are greater than 3 are solutions. So we could shade over here. But let's try some numbers down here. Will 2 work in here? The absolute value of 2, is that greater than 3? No. How about 0? Nope. How about negative 2? Nope. How about negative 4? 
The absolute value of negative 4 is 4, and that is greater than 3. How about negative 5? Yep. So all these numbers down here also are solutions to this inequality. So you can see here the solutions happen when x is greater than 3 or when x is less than negative 3. All right, let's take a look at this one. The absolute value of x is less than 3. What numbers work for this? Hmm, well, obviously these greater numbers won't work. Will 2 work? Yeah. 0? Yep. So we can start shading this way. But where do we stop? Will negative 1 work? Yep. Negative 2? Yep. But how about these way over here? Negative 4? Is the absolute value of negative 4 less than 3? No, because 4 is not less than 3. So this time we will stop at the negative 3. All of these values in between work for this inequality. So we want to say that x has to be less than 3 and greater than negative 3. We could also write the compound inequality like that. We can see that absolute value inequalities are going to have two different cases, kind of like equations do. Let's see how it works with this one. Start out by isolating the absolute value. So let's get rid of this 5, this minus 5. We'll, so we'll add it to do the inverse. Now that we have the absolute value isolated, we're ready to set up the two different cases. The first one's going to look pretty much like what you see here, but no absolute value. Okay, now let's refer back up here. When we started with a greater or greater than or equal to, we had to switch the second sign and switch the sign of the number. Okay? So we'll write 7x plus plus 14. Instead of greater than or equal to, we'll switch it to less than or equal to. And instead of a positive 70, we'll have a negative 70. Now think, can a number be greater than 70 and less than negative 70? No, so we want to write the word or. We don't want to say and because a number can't be both of those things. Or is important here. Now we'll solve each one. On a number line, our arrows will be pointing away from each other. We have greater than or equal to positive 8, so that's a closed circle, and we have less than or equal to negative 12.